All right, today we're going to start day one of two talking about equations. Um, equations. So solving equations is built around the idea of inverse operations. That is to say, we want to undo all operations until we have a variable alone on one side of the equation. When we work with order of operations, and we've already done that, what we saw is that we were working from the inside of things to the outside of things, right? When we're solving equations, because we're trying to undo things, we work everything in the opposite order. So we work things from the outside down to the inside. So everything happens in reverse. So we're going to do a number of examples um, as we're taking a look at these. Sorry, I forgot to mark who's here. Let me do that real quick. this one, there is only one thing that's on the same side of the equation as the x. So there's not a whole lot that we have to make decisions about. The only thing that's there is the addition of a 3.2. So we're going to invert that. We're going to do the inverse operation. And the opposite of addition is subtraction. subtraction. So to remove or to shift the 3.2, we will subtract a 3.2. And we're doing that because 3.2 minus 3.2 is 0. That's why. That leaves us with an x all on its lonesome on the left-hand side, and we actually need to subtract 4.6 minus 3.2, which is what? 1.4. Okay? So you're going to show me that much. That's it. There's nothing else to do. You're going to show this tiny little bit because they're going to get more detailed very quickly and more as we move on into section 12. Number two, there's a couple of ways you could work the problem. Um, guess and check is not what we're doing here, um, by the way. So could you look at that and probably just reason it out? Yeah, you probably could, I know. Um, but we're going to invert operations. So it doesn't matter which side of the equation the variable is on. So the fact is it's already on the right-hand side. And aside from the negative 8, there's nothing else being done to it. So you can leave it where it is. You could move it, but there's no need. So right now it just has a minus 8 associated with it. So what's the opposite of subtraction by 8? Addition. Addition by 8. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. Negative 8 and positive 8 is 0, leaving me with a y on the right. And 5 plus 8 is 13. 13. First problem had decimals in it. Um, the third problem has fractions in it. Um, technically, can you change them into decimals and will I be okay with that? Yes, but not only if the decimals are terminating, and this one's not going to do that. They're actually going to have some repeating decimals if you try to do it. So we're going to keep it in fractional form for that reason. Uh, the two-thirds is still being added to this variable z on the left, so the opposite of addition is subtraction. subtraction. So we're going to subtract two-thirds. But we're going to have to utilize what we did with fractions um, a few sections back in order to do that. So actually, I'll just write it down here. We have 3 halves minus 2 thirds. What do we have to do in order to combine those? Common yeah, we got to get a common denominator. And there's a couple of ways that we did that. Um, one way to do that is to recognize that the 2 and the 3 don't have anything in common. So you could multiply the first fraction by 3 over 3, the second one by 2 over 2. The denominators will now match. They'll be 6. So I have 9 over 6 minus 4 over 6. And 9 minus 4 is 5. So our answer is 5 over 6. Okay, so adding and subtracting opposite operations. We've had three examples. I think we're good to go. 
Um, it's not the only thing that can be attached or the only way a number can be attached to a variable. What operation is acting between the for and the you? Multiplication. Multiplication. So when the number and the variable are juxtaposed, like right beside each other, they're multiplied together. And the opposite of multiplication is? Division. Division. So the way that we shift or move or eliminate the four is that we divide by four. Again, both sides. So four times u divided by four is u. And then there's a couple of ways you could deal with the right-hand side. You could just reduce it in fraction form. That's an easy way to do it. 18 and four don't have anything, don't have the entire thing in common. They only have a two in common. So if you do it from that perspective, you'll end up with nine halves which is perfectly acceptable. If you actually do the division or you allow your calculator to do the division, this one is a terminating, that means ending decimal, and it's 4.5. So the decimal form or the fraction form work perfect for this one since it terminates. Is that good? Okay. How are the x and the seven attached? Division, what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Multiplication. So we're going to multiply by the seven. So when I multiply by seven and I divide the seven by seven, they eliminate to giving me x and four times seven is 28. 28. Okay, are these problems gonna go quick on your homework? Yes. Yeah, they're gonna go quick, all right? How about this one? Negative two x, what am I gonna do to solve this one for x? <laughs> Divide by negative 2. So again, the negative 2s will cancel, leaving me with an x on the left. And what is 3.8 divided by negative 2? Yeah, make sure you get the number and the sign attached. Negative 1.9. Okay, every single problem that we just did were one-step equations. I only had to do one thing to solve for x, right? Or m or whatever the letter was. Some of our equations will have more than one step. So multi-step equations, two or more. So on number seven, there are two different ways that you could do the problem. I'll show you one, I'll show you the other. You can decide which one you like and go with it from there. Um, the four, it's in front, and the negative x are combined with subtraction. But the piece that's being subtracted is not the four, it's the x. So what we actually need to do is to recognize that this is a positive four at the beginning, and the way that we'll undo the positive four is still going to be subtracting four. So I can subtract four from the left and from the right, thereby eliminating this piece. Don't forget, though, that the x still has a negative in front of it. Don't lose the negative. And then what's seven minus four? Three. 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 How are the negative and the x attached? What operation? Couldn't you multiply it by itself in a positive way? You could. So you can either multiply or divide by mm -hmm. negative 1. Yeah. yeah, either way. So I think of it as division, but multiplication works just as well. When you multiply or divide by a negative for negative 1, it will just eliminate the sign. Exactly. So this is... It's not the identity property, um, but when we're changing the sign like that, that is a property of negative numbers, yeah. Uh, the other way that you could do this problem, just so I can show you, is that you, you could add the x to the right-hand side. So it would eliminate the addition <coughs> and subtraction of the x here, leaving me with 4 equals 7 plus x, uh, and then you could subtract 7. That's another way to handle this one because it's got just a negative associated with that x. Uh, on number eight, so number eight, I didn't mention on number seven, though it's true. On number eight, remember what I said at the beginning, we're working from the outside in. So while there is a six being multiplied by an x, there's also a two being added to x. The piece that's sort of furthest away on the outside in is the addition piece. Or if you think about doing your order of operations in reverse, right, parentheses, exponents, all those things, right, addition and subtraction is last. So when we're solving equations, the addition and subtraction piece happens first. So the first thing we're actually going to do is going to be subtracting our two. 
the 6x is going to equal. So what's 14 minus 2? 12. And then how am I going to unattach the 6? Divide by 6. I'm going to divide by 6. 12 divided by 6 is? 2. 2. How could I check to make sure that the answers that I've been getting on how many problems I've had so far, eight problems, are right? Plug the answer in with that. Yeah. You can take whatever answer you get at the end. This is 2. And make sure that when I put it back in for x, it works. What is 6 times 2? 12. Plus 2? 14. It's 14. That is the right answer. So while you don't have, like, a back of the book to check, like you would if you had a traditional textbook, every problem that you work in this section, you can check your answer all by yourself. Super easy. Okay? All right, two more. I think two more. Okay, there are two ways, again, to do number nine. Um, the first way to do number nine is probably the one um, that you're going to think of uh, as distributing. Yeah, so one way to do this is to distribute first. Okay, so this would be 3w minus 21 equals 18. Okay, what would I do next? Add 21. Add 21. Mm-hmm. So 3w equals, what's 18 plus 21? Uh, it is. And then what? Uh, divide 39 by 3. So w will equal Three. Oh, sorry, 13. 13. Yep. Okay. So this certainly works. You can do this every time. There is another way to do it, though, that actually is quicker. How is the 3 attached to the piece that's in parentheses? Multiplication. That's right, Keaton. So if I wanted to undo the multiplication because it's the furthest thing away from the x, right, the thing on the outside of the parentheses, I can actually take the 3 and divide by both sides. What is 18 divided by 3? 6. And then if I add my 7, what happens? I get the same 13 that I did over here. Does it matter which one you use? Those methods, not at all. It's just whichever one occurs to you, just go with it. But they both work. All right, number 10 is a little bit different. On number 10, we're given two equations. One of them has two variables in it, z equals 4y. The other equation tells you what y is. So this is a substitution kind of an equation pair. So you're going to take what they tell you y is, namely 7, and you're going to evaluate it into the other equation. So we're going to take this equation, z equals 4, and we're going to substitute the 7 in for y. And that means that z will equal 28. 28. 